It takes a little bit of a, you know, because she is older. See, it takes a little while to start it. Yeah, this is the only kind of music that uh, you listen to in this car. It's all oldies. oldies, yeah. Check this out. You good? Yeah. I'll just do a little interview real quick. I have four kids and three grandkids. Right now there's five of us here. I don't know how they do it with the, those 50 bedroom houses. I don't uh, show it too much because they think if you have a house that you're rich. <laughs> there's my dog run here. And all of them were going buck wild. Except for him, so. When I walked up to his cage, he just started licking my hand, so I was like, oh, he's cool. He was cool with all the kids, because, you know, I got three grandkids, so he's always been cool with them. One side. Let me get you some water. I built this for my mom. It was, this was my garage. I built it for her. She got sick and ended up taking her life and never, never made it here. I'm gonna show you my books. This is what happens when the when the roof leaks. My nice books. Portraits. Yeah, this is LA Woman, LA Portraits, this is Los Angeles. This, you know, I got love for my city. This 2009, 2013, 2019. It's over 20 years, over 20 years, 20 years, 25 years. I wish I had shot way more shit in the 90s because I just love that period. era was just like the golden years for me. These are the Samoan guys. There's a day I was shooting these guys and they wanted to go to um, their friend's uh, cemetery grave site. Today's Danny Trejo's 75th birthday. Happy birthday, Danny. Snoop Dogg, Be Real, Dr. Dre, Daz, and Nate Dogg, rest in peace. I mean, West Coast legends right there. During the 90s, we were cruising on Hollywood Boulevard, and this is like a common thing all night, every night. You just see like cops searching gang members up and down the street. Actually, I just took like one or two shots of him. LA is known for the high-speed chase. There's like 10 more cops back here, but I wanted to get this shot with the guys on the floor, all these guys, their guns out, him with his gun out. It's another day in East LA. I was doing construction during the day and I was working at clubs at nighttime. Working at the clubs is when I met most of the musicians that came out of LA. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Fishbone, Untouchables, the Booyah Tribe, Cypress Hill, Everlast from House of Pain, all those kind of bands that came out of LA in the 80s. One of the people that I met in, and became good friends with was DJ Muggs from Cypress Hill. And in 1992, Muggs asked me if I wanted to road manage a group I have coming out called House of Pain. And I didn't know nothing about road managing, so I was like, you know, yeah, I'll try it. A Jump Around became a big hit on the record, and we went on tour with the Beastie Boys. It took off from there and uh, started making a little bit of money. 
1994 comes, I have a low rider and been on tour for a while. And my dad was like, hey, uh, you know, you live a pretty cool lifestyle. You should take me and my wife's extra camera. You should take it with you on the road. And when you go to East LA and you do the low riding thing. So I was like, okay, cool. And at first I didn't really take it out because I kind of felt like um, it was corny, you know? Usually you just see paparazzis, tourists, so my dad, you know, put me on to documenting, uh, you know, my life, which was low riding in East LA when I was back home and touring around the world with House of Pain. It ended up working out pretty good and I started, you know, doing some good work. And around 2005, Cyprus wasn't really touring that much and I had to make a decision. That's when I uh, dove in head first to yeah. photography and music videos and you know, I've been just doing that ever since. When you want to be a photographer, You have to do art shows. And when you have to do art shows, you have to make prints. And when you have a print, you got to get a frame. So this is what happened when I wanted to do some art shows. That's my, uh, my dream is to have a big show in a, a museum, like a solo show, so I could really Show what I got. This is a shot of my friend. He got he had gotten shot five times uh, the early morning of this day. It was like one, two, three, four, five in the arm. This is another friend of mine who got shot at a couple of times. There's like one, two, three holes. There's another one there. This guy got shot at. I think five times. Shotgun. There's a friend of mine. He got one, two, three guns. And uh, that night he told me like, if I get pulled over tonight, you're gonna see me on the news. I wrote like a dedication thanks to my wife for not tripping. That's me and her in the 90s. We've been together for 24 years. And we were at a car show and I just go, hey, can I take a picture? And she goes, yeah, yeah. And I noticed like she was kind of moving where I go, you all right? And she goes, yeah, I just got shot a couple of days ago. And I go, where? And she was right here. I was like, damn. I had a low rider before I had a camera, so I was already in the culture that way. I'm neutral, I'm not in the gang, so I wasn't coming as an enemy. I was coming as a friend. There's a lot of a lot that goes with that kind of lifestyle. You know, you have to constantly watch your back and watch where you are. And, you know, I had cousins that were full-blown gang members and went to prison and did heroin and the kind of guys that would kick your door down and, you know, put you on the ground with a shotgun and shit like that. But by the time I was taking photos and, and I was into the low riding scene and I was into the hip hop, that was in the early 90s when LA was just on fire, you know? Creatively and literally, you know, because we had the LA riots in 92. This is my wife, this is uh, my friend Mono. Rest in peace, he passed away. He's the one who introduced me to, to my wife. His wifey is my boy Triggs, he passed away. You know, this is like all people that have passed away that I've shot, even my dog. So I just grabbed this book out of the garage. There was like 20 of these same books. And I noticed it was to my mom. 
I wrote this to her. I don't even know how I got it again. My mom was disabled when I was growing up at like the age of eight, so uh, she had broke her back. They never fixed it, and she was just bad all the way to the end, in pain every day. My mom didn't have money. We were supported by the, by the system, and my dad and her divorced when I was three, so we didn't um, have money. And we were raised, I was raised on welfare and Medi-Cal, and, you know, we had a rough life. Well, this just kind of, you know, telling her, um, you know, I know you knew I could do it. You've always been positive, even though I haven't picked the easiest careers. You know, I've been a hard worker since the age of 12, because that's when I got my first job. You're a lot of the reason I'm such a hard worker. Thank you for always being there for me and my family. Love you, your son. My dad, he always took me around arts and nature. I remember that. Because I didn't live with him, you know, uh, my mom and him divorced when I was three. He would always take me to do like fun stuff because he knew my mom, you know, was, you know, laid up. My dad would tell me, you know, like, these photos are great. Don't stop doing it. I never thought I'd be an artist or a photographer. I just got the camera and started taking pictures and people started responding to my photos. People think, like, oh, how hard is, you know, taking pictures? All you gotta do is press the button I'm like, well, yeah you go ahead and try it let's see how you could uh take care of your family just pressing the button you got to get the work first first you got to be good enough to get the work then you got to get the work then you got to do the work and then you gotta hope you can get paid for it yeah step and repeat mm -hmm. And now you see what happened. This is in the morgue, in LA, LA County morgue. This is um, a dead body on Skid Row. I was walking by and I was like, oh shit, they didn't have it taped off yet. And um, the body was there and this plastic bag was like kind of right here. And this cop saw that it was kind of in the way and he walked over, he didn't say nothing to me. I thought he was gonna tell me, hey, you can't take pictures right here. But he walked over, kicked the bag to the side, and then went back and they were chopping it up. Like he kind of art directed it for me, which was cool. This photo is probably the most tattooed photo on people's bodies in the world. Not probably it is, it has to be. Because I get hundreds of these photos on people's wrists, on their mm -hmm. chest, on their head in their back, in their arms, their legs. There's my friend uh, Rascal sitting in my car in the 47 that you saw back there. I like the angles of everything. And of course, you know, his tattoos and everything. I always looked at old black and white photos and just thought like, man, this is the shit. I love that, you know? I loved like looking at old Life magazines or Time magazines and, you know, you've seen Elvis Presley, you know, getting his hair cut in the barber shop or Sammy Davis Jr. And, and Frank Sinatra and all those guys, you know, recording in the studios with a suit on, with a cigarette and a drink. I base it on hard work, drive, knowing how to hustle, knowing how to maneuver in and out of different cultures. I have over 500,000 photos on negatives. 
and I have a couple hundred thousand on digital. I've gotten paid to do maybe 10% of that. So the other 90% I did just because I wanted to do it and because I love what I do. I love taking photos and that's what my passion is. You know, this makes it all worth it when you can, you work hard, you know, busting your ass. To me, I, I'm most proud of all the work that I've done. The whole 25 years of shooting worldwide, the archives that I've gotten, you know, is, to me is just, prices. You know, I love what I do. I've, um, you know, traveled the world. had a, good, a lot of good times with uh, with my craft. Mm -hmm.